Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now in this one, we're going to be turning this into one of these. So this is a Doopy Doo E11 kit. It's a great budget option for people to get an E11 blaster for not a lot of money. We're just going to start standing this down and begin gluing it all together. Action here. Now well, we can work with it. It's gonna be weathered up anyway. So I sprayed the main parts of my blaster in a base black. This has gone okay. This this paint feels a little um, tacky. It's been sitting for a couple of days. I don't know if the, it's just the sort of finish of the paint or if it's not sort of ideal curing conditions for it, but. I think it's fine, I'm just going to go ahead and start weathering it. Uh, this should help, um, you know, maybe swipe out some of this tack in it. And then I'm going to clear coat it anyway, which uh, should hopefully cure any of that. I mean, it's not coming off in my hands or anything. You know, there's no indentations being left when I touch it. These have been painted in much the same way. So I'm just going to start going in and painting some details and some weathering. Of course, because the main parts of this are black, you have to weather with... Uh, things a little lighter usually, otherwise it just doesn't show up. So on the real Sterling machine guns that these blasters were made on, you know, from, they have this quite distinctive crinkle paint texture on the main part of the gun and the paint job I had wasn't really doing it for me in making it look like this so what I did was I've mixed in some gloss gel into my paint and then I've just been stippling it just like this over the surface and it's actually giving a really nice textured finish which is really similar to that crinkled paint I'm really digging it at the moment 
adds volume to the paint, which leaves these lovely peaks of texture. Again, you might think it looks weird, but it's what the actual one is like. Just touching some brown into the corners here, just create a bit of contrast and make it look a bit dirty and or rusty. So I've got all my base colouring on there including this fantastic texture paint. So what I'm going to do now is just paint these grip pieces with a Tamiya rubber black. This should give them the look of the rubber T-tracks and then go ahead and start weathering it. For this I'm going to use these which are water mixable oil colours. I have a black and a brown which is a raw umber and these give a really good greasy look. You can mix them with water, but they are oil paints. They take a while to dry. They take a while to dry. The ease I've found with a thin layer of weathering, they take about a week to dry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Hard to capture the subtle difference, but you can see all up in here there's some subtle weathering and down here. It's just been left in the crevices and it's that subtlety that we're going for in getting this to look a bit more real. Life on here. So now all the weathering's been put onto this, I've got to let it sit and dry. So we're going to set this aside and I'm going to start on the aluminium rail, which is going to go up here. Let's put you somewhere. So to make the slight rail, I've got this. It's a aluminium bar, I think you say a bar strip, whatever it is. It's 20 mil wide this way. And I got about a meter of it, which is more than enough. I got this from a shop called Wix. They do a lot of different uh, building materials. So it wasn't very expensive, but we're going to just bend this to shape. Luckily, I have this one to go by. This is my real Sterling 11. I've just done a video on this. You can go and check it out here. Yeah. But this is one that I bought before when I did this. So I'm just going to take measurements off of this one so I can mount my resin ones in the same way. shape there. So to cut this we're going to need a Dremel and probably going to use a bench grinder. So this is pretty close, I think I'm just going to start bending in the vise and seeing if we can get it to shape. So the rail now sits nice and flush on here. There's a hole in the back here which lines up with the side piece and there's just a slot on the front that drops into this extra hole at the front of the barrel. I also made this little extra piece here which is going to bolt on up here. This will hold the Hexler counter box. I just drill a hole in that as well. I've also drilled two holes on the top here and these are going to line up with the scope which is going to sit on there like that and there's going to be bolts to go through the bottom that hold these on. I'm using steel metric bolts here, they're just uh, socket cap screws. They actually self-tap themselves 
into the aluminium when you screw them through and even more easily into the resin when you screw them into the resin. So it's actually threaded without much effort and that's it. I've just got to paint these black and then we're pretty much ready for the final assembly. I've got all my parts laid out and they're ready to go. I've got my main blaster here, we've got the end cap, the scope, the counter, my rail and just four bolts to hold it all together. So what I'm going to do is start putting bits together. I'm going to use the bolts to hold everything to the rail and then probably help it in with a bit of super glue. But other than that, that's all we got to do. There's just one socket capped bolt and a self mocking nut which goes through the rear sight and the sight rail that locks it all together. Right, there's just one last thing to do. On the scope there is some lettering. Now I could painstakingly try and paint all this in but there is a much better way, and that's just using a white crayon. So there we go guys, we've gone from white plastic to a perfectly serviceable trooping blaster. It's got a very nice feel and look to it, not too heavy and certainly robust enough to take out and about. I hope you enjoyed following along with this build, although I do encourage you to give it a go and paint up your blasters, you know, um, hopefully I gave you some ideas. If you did want me to paint your blaster, I'd be more than happy to do it, please just hit me up on Facebook. This one's going to be out and about very soon with my Hask costume. As for what's coming up, we will be continuing Blaster Month. The next build is very on topic, let's say, and it should be a good one. But until then, take care. Bye-bye.